Hi everyone, JP Danko from BlurMediaPhotography.com and this is a video tutorial for DIYPhotography.net. So summer's just around the corner and I happen to be editing a lot of underwater photography at the moment for my stock portfolio and I thought it would be interesting to put up a video tutorial to show everyone my workflow for post-processing underwater photography because you know, underwater cameras are becoming more and more popular, but it actually takes quite a bit of work in post to take those um, photos that come out of camera and produce underwater photography that really pops, that really looks interesting. So we're going to head over to Lightroom and let's get started. The first thing I always do in Lightroom with all my photos is to apply a lens profile correction. And that's especially important for underwater photos. So this particular photo was taken with a 28 millimeter lens. For most underwater photos, you wanna be shooting very wide angle and very close to your subject, which means um, you're gonna to wanna to apply a profile correction before you get started on the rest of your Lightroom edits. The next thing I do is look at my white balance. So in this photo I can see the white balance is actually not bad. It was a bright sunny day and I'm fairly close to the surface. Um, to start I'm going to use the temperature picker and try and find an area on the photo that is roughly neutral gray. So I'm just going to pick something like that and see how what that gives me. And actually that's that's pretty good. I'm going to bring the temperature just down a touch, somewhere around 7200, um, and the tint uh, just a little bit more magenta in there, up to, I don't know, try, try 79 around there. Now, this is really just a taste, and as you can see right now, I can't really tell in this photo how good the temperature um, the, the white balance is, so I, I'll probably have to go back to that after I do some more adjustments. Next, I'm going to come down here to the exposure slider. I think the exposure is not bad where it is. It could come down just a touch, so I'm going to bring it down to minus 0.24. Next, I'm going to look at the contrast. Now, one common thing you'll notice with underwater photos is they always have very low contrast. So to start adding contrast back in, in Lightroom, I'm going to uh, raise the contrast slider, but I don't want to go too too high with it because the other factor that's going on here is I've got very bright highlights. This photo was taken near the surface so you've got very bright sunshine right here and because uh, light drops off very quickly in water um, you go from that very light area up near the surface to very dark areas very quickly. So the next thing I'm going to do after I've added a little bit of contrast is to bring down the blacks. I want to try and add some more blacks into this photo and you'll see you really have to bring your blacks way down before you get uh, a true black. So if you hold down alt that'll show you the black uh, clipping mask and I have to bring my blacks all the way down to like minus 88 before any blacks start clipping. clipping. and I just bring it up a little bit from there. So about minus 79 on the blacks um, gives me a nice black level. Next I'm going to come back to the highlights and again you can see the highlights uh, in the bubbles up near the surface here. They're very bright and on the top of her leg. So I'm going to bring the highlights down. Again this is something that you'll tend to notice in a lot of underwater photos that the highlights are very bright. So just by bringing the highlight slider down I can reduce the um, intensity of those highlights. Next I'm going to add a little bit of clarity. Now I'm going to take this photo into Photoshop to add some detail and also contrast so I don't want to add too much clarity right now in Lightroom but I'm just going to add a little bit so like I don't know plus 10 or so. Finally I'm going to look at the vibrance and I'd like to add just a little bit more color in there so you know you don't want to add a crazy amount of vibrance but Underwater photos are typically very dull and uh, and blue, so in this particular photo I happen to have quite a few colors in here, so I'm going to add um, a little bit of vibrance there, so I'm at plus 38 on the vibrance. And the last thing that I'm going to do in Lightroom before I head over to Photoshop is crop. So I think my horizon is just a little bit um, crooked there, so I'm just going to straighten that up a touch uh, with the crop tool. 
and I think I'm ready to go and finish my photo off in Photoshop. Now, I am going to use uh, two Topaz filters in Photoshop. I'm going to use uh, Topaz Denoise and also Topaz Detail. Now, if you don't have Topaz Denoise, if you don't want to use a plugin, you can apply noise reduction right in Lightroom. So to apply noise reduction right in Lightroom, you just come down here to the noise reduction settings and you want to zoom in. You want to look at your photo at 100% for this um, so that you can really see the noise in the photo. And, you know, really this is just a taste. You bring the luminance slider up to a range where you kind of see that noise start to disappear. And you can also apply some uh, color noise reduction as well. Be a little bit more reserved with the color one than the luminance. And going back to the uh, full size photo, you can see that it's done a pretty good job of getting rid of the noise. But like I said, I'm going to use Topaz Denoise in Photoshop to do this. So I'm going to set that back to um, how it came out of camera. That's it for my initial edits in Lightroom. So now I'm going to bring this photo into Photoshop to uh, do some more additional editing. We've got all our basic adjustments done in Lightroom and we're now in Photoshop. So the first thing I'm going to do here is duplicate my background layer. So Control J. And I'm going to apply a my first Topaz filter on this layer. I'm going to use the Denoise, Topaz Denoise um, plugin. So filter, topaz labs, and topaz denoise. Like I said, you can do denoise in right in Lightroom, but I personally prefer topaz denoise. I think it just does a, a overall better job. And I find that in underwater photos, um, even though this photo was taken at ISO 200, there just seems to be a lot of noise present. And I think a lot of that has to do with just, um, you know, there's a lot of particles in the water kind of floating around. And it's not necessarily um, camera noise, but it, it appears that way in a close-up. So I'm just going to apply one of these um, noise presets. I usually find kind of ma raw, moderate works fairly well. Um, I find the one that I like, and then I go back a little bit um, to apply a little bit less. So yeah, I'm going to go with raw moderate and click OK. Now that I've got the noise and some of that grain in this photo cleaned up, I'm going to add some detail back into this photo. You'll notice underwater photos tend to look um, just kind of dull and not very sharp. And that's just a factor of the camera lens looking through all that water. Um, so I'm going to use another Topaz plugin. I'm going to use Topaz Detail. Now, again, you don't need to use Topaz for this. You can use a high pass filter, or you can even just bring your photo back into Lightroom and apply clarity. But uh, personally, I, I just find Topaz Detail does a very good job of um, adding uh, detail into the waves and the little ripples and bubbles and stuff like that in underwater photos. So I'm going to apply that filter now. I'm in the Topaz Detail uh, plugin window here and all I do is I select a preset filter that I like and each photo is a little bit different and you can see some of these actually look really horrible. Um, for example, this one just brings up all that backscatter in the um, in the background here and I don't want to see that. I mainly want to enhance the detail in the waves in my subject and in the bubbles but I don't want very much um, detail to show up in the backscatter. This is just the the little particles in the water and if you apply too much detail they really tend to stick out. So the trick here is to enhance the detail in the photo but not to use a filter that is too overpowering. So I'm just going to go through these and, and pick one that I like. I'm going to go with this preset, Overall Detail Strong 1. I like the detail that it adds in into the waves and the bubbles, and it's not too overpowering here in the, um, in the background, but we're going to take care of that back in Photoshop. So let's click OK. Back in Photoshop, we've got our Topaz Detail Enhancement done. And you can see the uh, the before and after here. So that's what it looked like before and with Topaz Detail. Now you can see that there is a little bit of backscatter and kind of ugly stuff going on here in the water column in the background. 
and I don't want to see that. I only want to see the detail in the subject in the waves. So I'm going to apply a layer mask here. I'm going to hold down Alt and click Layer Mask. And that brings up the inverse layer mask. Now I'm going to select a white paintbrush and I'm going to brush in the areas of the photos that I want to see that detail applied. I'm going to use a relatively low opacity and a fairly big brush and a very low hardness. Um, so something like that, too big, go down a little bit, opacity 64 is too high, bring that down. Now I'm just going to brush in the areas of, of the photo here that I want to see the detail in and I'm going to stay away from the water column and the areas of the photo where I want to keep that mask applied. I don't want to see the topaz detail applied. I don't want to see this applied down here so I'm not going to brush anything in there. I'm just going to brush in my subject, the bubbles, and the waves here. Now I've got the areas of the photo where I don't want to see detail masked out so my water column still has a nice smooth even gradient and the areas where I do want to de see detail masked in so here's the uh, the before and after there. Next I'm going to enhance the contrast in this photo. So I'm going to select my two adjustment layers, my denoise layer and my detail layer and then I'm going to merge those into a new layer. You can do that with a keyboard shortcut, Control alt shift e and that creates a new merged layer and I'm going to call this layer Dodge and Burn. I'm going to go over here and grab my Burn tool and I'm going to select in the range, select Shadows. The exposure, a relatively low exposure, 4 to 6% tends to work well. I'm going to choose 5% there and a very large brush and 0% hardness so you want a really soft brush and then I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase the contrast by darkening the shadows and I'm going to paint over my picture in the areas where I, I want to darken the shadows a little bit. Now you do have to be a little bit careful with this because you don't want to go um, darken too much the areas of your photo that are already dark are going to get much darker than say the midtones but it does a really nice job of adding in um, some shadow contrast and that, I find that's especially important for underwater photos. Once I'm done adding contrast to the shadows I'm going to add contrast by lightening the highlights so back over here and select the dodge tool come up here to range and select highlights and I find a very low exposure somewhere below 5% works. I'm going to try 2%. Um, I already have fairly bright highlights and I don't really want to brighten them too much more um, but it helps just to add a little bit more contrast into the highlights here. So brush over the areas where I want to add a little bit more brightness to the highlights and then let's look at the before and after. So that's before dodge and burn and that's with dodge and burn. And if you're not quite uh, comfortable with the job that you did, you can just lower the opacity of your dodge and burn layer and bring it up to a level where you think it looks good, but maybe, you know, if you went a little bit too dark with the burning, um, just bring that back a little bit. The last thing I do in Photoshop is to touch up some of the details. So I'm going to create a new layer, Control J. Um, from my top layer and I'm going to call this one touch-ups and in the water column you can see there's there's some of the backscatter that's kind of per, more pronounced than others and I can also see some what I think is um, sensor dust in there that I'm going to delete and also if you come in up here I really like the shape that these bubbles are making on our waist on the top but on the bottom I think I'm going to use liquify to pull this in a little bit I think it'll just add a little bit more shape to her form there to get started I'm going to use the spot healing brush tool to get rid of these um, uh, sensor dust and you just uh, click on that choose a brush that's a little bit bigger than the spot you want to get rid of and uh, a minimum hardness so I'm using 0% and then if you just click on the spot it usually does a pretty good job of just getting rid of that um, without any other uh, input on your part. And here's a couple more and I just kind of scan through my photo and see if there's anything else that I need to touch up. That looks good as far as spots go and you could create a new layer here but I'm just going to add my liquify filter directly to this layer. So filter and liquify 
I'm in the liquify window and there are quite a few ways that you can do this in liquify um, but I'm just going to use the push left tool which is this tool here I've got a brush size of 330 you want your brush to be just a little bit bigger than the area that you're going to liquify the brush density is 30 with a brush pressure of 32 and again you know those aren't really you know firm hard fast numbers you can kind of just pick whatever works for you but something in that range is usually good and all you do is you gently smooth that edge in a little bit now liquify you you really do have to be careful that you don't overdo it because you want to have a modification that looks natural um, so in this case you know I don't want to give her a Barbie doll waist I just want to bring it in just a little bit so it matches the top of, of her figure here and I think that looks good to me so I'm gonna click OK we're back in Photoshop with our all of our Photoshop touch-ups finished and show you the before and the after of the liquify in our touch-ups so that's before and after and we're ready to jump back to Lightroom. Back in Lightroom, I'm just gonna make a few more last final adjustments before I'm finished with this photo. So the first thing I'm gonna look at is the exposure. I'm pretty happy with where the exposure's at. Um, so I'm gonna leave that there. I'm gonna add a little bit of clarity. Um, this is kind of the, the final last step to add a little bit more punch, a little bit more uh, contrast to this photo. But, you know, I don't want to go too heavy with it. Just just a touch more clarity in there, I think, will, will look quite good. And I'm going to darken these rocks at the bottom here. I think they're just a little bit too bright. So I'm going to use a gradient with uh, um, exposure. Just bring the exposure down a little bit. It's, it's set to minus um, 0.23 there. And just play with that till I get the rocks into a range that I like. But there looks good. And the last thing I'm going to do is... I don't really like the highlights here on her leg and on her arm. I think they're a little bit too bright. So I'm going to use the adjustment brush uh, with an exposure of minus 0.23, um, somewhere in that range. And I'm going to just uh, brush on here uh, on the top of her leg and also on her arm to bring down that exposure just a little bit and kind of even things out in this photo. Maybe it'll bring the highlights down just a touch too. So there we go. Okay, so this photo is finished and I can export that now to my stock portfolio. If I go to the original, so this is what this photo looked like when it came out of camera. And we'll go to our Lightroom edits. So after we're done in Lightroom, that's what uh, we had and then our final Photoshop edit. And there's our final photo there. I hope that was informative for everyone and you've learned some good techniques that you can apply to your own underwater photography this summer. And don't forget to click subscribe to our channel here and visit us at DIYphotography.net. Cheers.